nita I'll, I'll mention three people in the Bible. This is the prayer I have that is that can help you to, to do affected by the spiritual and cancer. You. And later on maisha yao yakangamia na walikuwa ni watu walikuwa na very great potential na wakakwama kwa sababu hawakuweza kufika mahali ambapo Mungu alipo wasaidia kufika and uh, today i want to talk one cancer in the ambayo imemeshonwa katika biblia alafu pengine jumapili jana jumapili ingine nitataja cancer jingine ambazo ziko mention in the bible but today i want to mention one cancer and then i'll mention three people ambao walikuwa affected by that cancer and uh, the first cancer that i want to deal in ito greed sema greed greed na kiswahili tunasema aje tama huh? ni tama eh and uh, the word greed in manisha it is a selfish and excessive desire for for more of something that is not needed ni kuhitaji kitu zaidi na kuwa na tamaa ya kitu zaidi ambacho hauhitaji uh, ni mtu ambaye anahitaji kitu zaidi ya kiasi kile ambacho Mungu amempa. Na nataka tukaangali tukafungue Biblia yetu ama kabla tujifungue Biblia yetu tamaa yaweza kuwa ni tamaa ya pesa, tamaa ya ambition, ambition ni ile hali ya kutaka jambo fulani litendeke, tamaa ya kuwa na jambo ambalo unahitaji zaidi. Eh? Kitu ambacho unakihitaji excessively Dada moja aliniambia mimi pastor I have to get married and I have to get married now. Sijari ni nani atakuja kama ni wazimu ama ni mchawi ama ni mzee mzee kuniliko but I want to get married and I want to get married now. Yeah? It is good to get married but that one was an excessive. Alitaka lakini alihitaji zaidi ya vile anavyohitaji. Pia kuna the the greed of the spiritual matter. You want to know the things of the spirit more but you don't want to follow the process na tutaona watu kadhaa katika Biblia ambao wali fail in the line of duty wakifanyia Mungu kazi. Na ndio maana unaona siku hizi kuna na manabii uongo they know what we want so they open that window ili tuwafute tuwafuate tutabiliwe na tuambiwe mambo mazuri and in that process we get lost on the way. And I want to talk about the three case of the greedy in the Bible or the three case of cancer people that were affected by cancer. Na kama una Biblia yako ningependa kufunga katika kitabu cha Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 21. Kumbukumbu la Torati 5 mstari wa 21. Uh, Peter if you are there kindly you can lead for us. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife mm-hmm. and you shall not desire your neighbor's house. Mm-hmm. His field, mm-hmm. his male servant, mm-hmm. his female servant, mm-hmm. his ox, mm-hmm. his donkey mm-hmm. or anything that is in your neighbor's Leo hii when we talk about the ask hakuna ask tunaongea kuhusu ugari nguo nzuri biashara nzuri nyumba nzuri those are the things that we have na ni zile vitu ambazo tunakovet kukovet ni ile hali ya kutamani sio unajua kuna kikula kutamani jambo ili likusaidie lakini kuna kule kutamani excessively baka unakuwa na ile roho ya ya kusikia wivu and uh, in the book of first john chapter 2 verses 16 to 17 Yohana wa kwanza mbili mstari wa 16 hadi wa 17 uh, for all is that, that is in the world the lust of the flesh mm-hmm. the lust of the eyes mm-hmm. and the pride of life is not of the father but of this world verse 17 and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will does the will of god abides Binds forever. forever there are two areas that i want you to underline ikiwa unatumia biblia yako underline mahali pa meandikwa the rust of the flesh hiyo ni tamaa ya mwili the rust of the eye hiyo ni tamaa ya macho and the pride of life na Holy Spirit. 
kuna kitu ambacho kinashikanisha binadamu na Mungu that is called the holy spirit na Yesu alipomaliza kazi yake miaka mitatu na nusu the last thing that Jesus did was to impact the church with the holy spirit na holy spirit alikuja for one reason that he may super grow us with the father because we cannot abide in the father tukiwa katika mwili we need tunahitaji roho mtakatifu ambaye anatushikanisha na Mungu and Yohana uh, anasema for all that is in the world chochote ambacho kiko katika dunia hii maana haya ni mambo ambayo tunakutana au kila siku jambo la kwanza we come across the last of the fresh tamaa ya mwili tunaingia katika dhambi tunatenda dhambi kwa sababu ya tamaa ya mwili tunaingia katika tamaa ya macho nakumbuka vizuri sana kuna vitu ambavyo vinanena especially wa mama wana hiyo weakness ya kunenewa na vitu unaenda supermarket unapata ka dress kazuri kanaanza kukuongeresha kana kuambia buy me ulikuwa umeenda ku buy kiatu lakini unaona ka dress kanaanza kukuita eh, kama wewe hauitangui wewe basi uko na shida kana kuita unapata umenunua ka dress ambacho hakaa kuwa katika mipango yako ni mawai nunua vitu vingi sana even my wife can bear me witness hata zingine tunaitishanga na jumia zinaletwa paka kwa nyumba lakini ukitu kifika vile ilifanywa advertisement pale kwa television ikifika kwa nyumba ni tofauti because it is the rust of the na ndio maana unaona wale watu wanafanya advertisement they can advertise a product kwa tv baka usikie pita unaweza enda the following day supermarket to new product lakini ukinunua unapata tofauti kuna kuna bruba nyingine maisana alikuwa anaipenda sana ilikuwa inaitwa kwapi prosper alikuwa anaipenda sana na kila wakati advertisement ikikuja kwa tv ananiambia dadi utanunua hiyo na siku moja nikaenda supermarket nikapata kuna ofa aka tu hapo nikapata kuna ofa na nikanunua sitaki kuitaja jina kwa sababu i'm not doing the advertisement ya hiyo kampuni na pita i want to tell you wakati ilipoletwa kwa nyumba the first person ku test alikuwa ni mko wangu akasema yak lakini tumeinunua kwa sababu kuna kitu kinavutia macho kinasema nunua hiyo nunua hiyo ni mzuri and we got go ahead and tukanunua so Yohana akasema there is a second thing ambayo ni to the rust of the eye na jambo la tatu it is the rust of the pride the pride of life na kila mmoja wetu hata mimi nikiwa ndani kila mmoja wetu anakuwa na ka ka percentage ka ka pride kidogo katika maisha yetu it is the thorn in the fresh ambayo Paulo alikuwa anasema the thorn in the fresh lakini Mungu anaruhusu hako ka kitu kakuje ili tusijinue. Maana Paulo alisema ukiona kana kombo umesimama sana jua unaweza anguka. So the last of the of the of the life inatusaidianga kujua we are not complete we need God to complete our life. And let me let us see the three people in the Bible ambao walikuwa affected na hizo vitu vitatu the pride the last of the fresh the last of the eye and the pride of life. The first Hassan alikuwa anaitwa Akan sema Akan Eh hey, ongeeni bwana Muongee haraka haraka nimalize muende mkone huru wa kiadress dunia si ndio eh? So muki respond nitawachilia mapema Msipo respond kuhakikisha nitatoka hapa kama uhuru amemaliza kuongea Sema Akan Akan alikuwa affected na kitu kinaitwa the last of the of the eye na in the book of Joshua Peter if you are there Joshua chapter 7 verses 19 to 21 chapter 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 7 verses 19 to 21 before we do that before Peter akiendea kuitafuta uh, Joshua alinenea wana wa Israeli akwambia as you go to the promised land you mutapa, mutashinda the, the three cities na kwambia the first city ambayo mtashinda chochote mtakacho kitoa katika ule mji Musichukue ikiwa ni dhahabu, fedha na mali zozote zile, musichukue zile mali na kujiwekea 
kwa sababu the first city Mungu alimwambia Joshua it is holy to God so chochote mtakacho miliki na kupokea katika ule mji wa kwanza mkakichukue na kukipeana kwa Mungu maana ni kitakatifu mbele za Mungu na walipoenda vita maandiko nasema Akan ndio alikuwa the the commander wa hiyo force wa hiyo kikundi na walipo conquer the first city maandiko nasema akaona zile vitu zilikuwa pale na hivi ndivyo kulivyofanyika verse 19 Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me now what you have done. Mm-hmm. Do not hide it from me. Mm-hmm. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel mm-hmm. and this is what I have done. 21. Mm-hmm. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful babylonian hold, hold there when i did what i saw if you are using your bible under rain i saw uh-huh when i saw among the spoils of a beautiful babylonian garment mm. 200 shekels of silver mm-hmm. and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels i coveted them Na, number two, i coveted i did what i coveted uh-huh i coveted them and took them and there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it so there are three things ambazo ziko mentioned here and haya ndio yale mambo ambayo yanatukumba when we are attacked by the spirit of the last of the flesh jambo la kwanza anasema i saw sema i saw nikaona dhambi kubwa zile zinazoingia katika tamaa ya mwili zinaanzaga na Nilipooa mke wangu kitu cha kwanza nilimuona I saw her Peter alipo propose wini jambo la kwanza alifanya nini alimuona Na hadithi ya Joshua inatuambia kuwa when they went to the city ambayo ilikuwa the city of Al maandiko nasema baada ya kukonka the army uh, Akan saw Aliona nini Aha uh-huh. 200 shekel of silver and the wedge gold weight 50 shekel so jambo la kwanza ali aliona and the second thing he coveted and the third thing he did what he took so there are four things here ambazo nataka tukaone in that package the cancer that affected him one he saw kuona yamanisha it was the seduction to see ni ile hali ya kuingizwa katika hali ya ya ya, ya kuona. Na nikatangulia kusema the product ambazo zinafanya advertisement wanahakikisha how advertise uh, soda ya Coca-Cola pasipo kuonyesha the image ya soda. Maana unaona mtu amekunywa soda ya Coca-Cola, amekunywa kitu kimekuja, amepata nguvu, amepepea. And the following day, vile ulivyoona jana, vile unazidi kuona, unakuwa seduced no kwa seduce the second thing ambacho kinakusukuma it is to go and that get that product so i can sew the, pro, the the silver and gold and the garment and the next thing he did he coveted kukovati na manisha it is craving for the riches wale watu ambao wako katika hali ya ya ya, ya ufisadi katika nchi ya Kenya they covert for riches because you want to be richer than the level that God has put you na mungu ameambia wana wa israeli ya kuwa chochote kile mtakacho miliki in the first city it is holy to god but alipoona kwa macho yake the next thing that came in him because the eye it is the doorway to your heart kitu ili kiingie katika moyo wako kinapitia kwa macho mawazo moyo na ndio naambia wale watu ambao wameolewa na wameoa m- mapenzi haikuangi kwa mawazo because mawazo inabadilika lakini moyo unabeba na unaweka na ndio unaona hata simbo ya, ya mapenzi na kuanga the heart si ndio kwa maana moyo ndio unaopenda ndio maana maandiko nasema Mungu hangari the physical appearance but he judges the the heart and a judge moyo wetu 
So kitu kinacho kinapoingia katika moyo wetu kinakuwa changed. Na ndio maana alipoona zile dhahabu zikaanza kumnenea maana aliona utajiri na mali. Kwa siku mingi walikuwa jangwani. There was no gold in the wilderness. Lakini wamekonka the first city ambapo kuna utajiri na zile mali zikaanza kumnenea. There was a craving of riches. Kukrave ni kule kusikia I need it and I need it now. Wale mamama wenye wako na watoto wanajua ukiwa mjamzito kuna kitu ambacho mtoto wanaitishanga. Na ninashangaa na watoto wa siku hizi kwa sababu wanaitisha pizza. Mamama watoto wa zamani walikuwa wanaitisha mawe. Eh? Na mchanga. Lakini wa siku hizi wanaitisha KFC. <laughs> pizza. Eh? Gudos. Eh? Nyama choma. <laughs> Na wakati yanapoitisha you unasikia unahitaji. Mama akitaka kukula mawe uiondoe mnaweza kosana. Kwa sababu kuna kitu kinaitisha, kinasema I need it, nahitaji hicho kitu sasa hizi. Ana crave kwa sababu hicho kitu. Na when you convert, na ndio maana tukatangulia kusema Mungu akamwambia wana Israeli, "Musitamani mke wenyewe, mali ya wenyewe." Because when that convert comes in you, kuna kuwa na ule msukumo ambao unakusukuma, unakwambia you have to do it, you have to get it. You have to crave for the riches. I can't not live without it. Siwezi nikaishi bila hicho kitu. Na ninajua kila kitu ambacho mna craving nacho. Citizen TV kizimu wa weekdays kuanzia saa moja na nusu mpaka saa tatu mtaanza kukomprenia kwa social media. Mnataka kuona sijui inaitangwaje? Zola. Najua na kukumbavia because kuna kitu mna crave ya have to see. Hata ukuo unapika chakula na kuna kitu kinaendelea zinaweza ungua kwa sababu mawazo yako iko kwa Zola. Because you are craving for that thing. And Akan when he saw the gold the next thing ilikuwa ni ku crave na baada ya kukrave the next level he took it took means to grab for something ni kukichukua na kasao it was disregarded by the word of god ya kuwa kile mtapata mtakachopata katika ile mji usichukichukue and the that thing he hid it akaficha na wale watu ambao wako na roho ama wako na kanza ya tamaa they want to get hold of everything and keep it for themselves. Umaiona mule mtu mrafi amekula chakula ameshiba na heli aweke kwa fridge lakini asipe jirani. Eh? Ongeni. Hata Christmas umepika chapati mifuko tatu. Wacha nilete mood ile ambayo mtaelewa chapati mifuko tatu na nyama. Eh? Na chakula mzuri. Umekuru umeshiba lakini kuna jirani hajakula but because of the greed lakini hao watu greed hawa yuko nasi hao wako ni watu wa dunia you keep it for yourself you don't want to distribute to the other person now wana wa Israeli walipotoka kwa maana Mungu alikuwa amewaambia ya kuwa chochote mtakacho miriki katika mji wa kwanza ni kitakatifu kwa Mungu ile mji walipoenda wa pili maandiko yanasema wakashindwa vita ni kwa sababu gani? Kuna kitu ambacho kimechukuliwa kikabebo katikati yao ambacho kilikuwa sio mapenzi ya Mungu ni kwa sababu ya roho ya tamaa ambayo it is a spiritual cancer. And I want to tell you when you are affected by the spiritual cancer it will become a problem not to you but even to the people around you. Not 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 only you but anywhere that you go unapata kuna mkosi kuna kitu kinakufuata kwa maana uko na uko na, na chembe chembe za kanza in your blood ndio maana unaona kanza the physical cancer ukigonjeka kitu cha kwanza unakuuliza ni nani katika familia yenu ambaye ako na kanza ambaye amewahi gonjeka kanza na kama kuna mtu katika familia yenu amewahi gonjeka na kanza ni vyema uanze kukataana na hiyo roho maana hiyo roho ni pepo na inapitia katika raini ya damu na hata katika mambo ya kiroho walipo wa, akan alipochukua alikuwa ni mtu mmoja lakini akan aka, aka he infected akan akafanya jeshi lote ambalo lilikuwa linaongozwa na Joshua likakosa kumiliki mji wa pili kwa maana kuna kitu alichokuwa amebeba ambacho kilikuwa kime ni kitakatifu kwa Mungu na akakichukua kwa sababu ya tamaa akaona akatamani akachukua na akaficha 
That is the spirit of a cancer, of a greedy man. Seeing, coverting, take, and hide. That is the first person. The second person. In the book of Isaiah, 14 verses 12 and 15. Alikuwa naitwa Lucifer. Sema Lucifer. Sema vizuri. Lucifer. Lucifer ni jina nzuri. Isaiah 14:12. Eh, koda pita. Lucifer ni jina nzuri. Because Lucifer alikuwa ni maraika ambaye alikuwa anamwimbia Mungu. Ilikuwa inamaanisha the star. Lakini alipo alipo agairi mapenzi ya Mungu, hilo jina Lucifer likageuzwa na kawa his satan of the devil. Lakini in, in the Bible, Lucifer was the archangel. Ambaye alikuwa naongoza katika mbele za Bwana. Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 15. Tusikie the fall of Lucifer. What happened? How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down. You for you have said in your heart. But this is microphone. But here you get it. microphone. Isaiah 14 12. Uh-huh. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, uh-huh. son of the morning. Son of the morning. So let's get the genome. Zuri. Yes. The son of the morning. Uh-huh. How you are cut down from the ground. Uh-huh. You who weakened the nations. Uh-huh. For you have said in your heart, hmm? I will ascend into heaven. And write that because we are coming there. I will ascend. I will do what? Ascend hmm? into heaven. Hmm? I will exalt my throne. And rain, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Hmm? I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. And rain, I will sit on the farthest sides of the north. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights mm-hmm. of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Verse 15. Yet you shall be brought down to the Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Amen. Listen. Huyu ni maraika ambaye alikuwa namwimbia Mungu baka bingu linasimama. Chochote kilicho binguni kinasimama, kinamsikiza Lucifer maana alikuwa he was a true worshiper. And he could worship until the presence ya mungu inashuka. Lakini mandiko nasema, alipu angalia na kona vile mungu alipu kuwa na fraia. Mana, mandiko nasema, Lucifer alikuwa na imba. Mungu anasimama katika kiti cha enzi. Nanti unona, praise and worship ni vizuri mwe wangarifu. Because roho ya Lucifer badu angali na tawara. Na shetani ya kasimama kasema, I will ascend in heaven. Ameona utukufu ule Mungu anachukua na akasema mimi nitainuka mbinguni. Nitaji au exalt, nita nitajipea utawala. I will sit on the seat. Who was on the seat? Si ni Mungu. But now he want to take the seat that belong to God. And there there are there are four things that made the Lucifer fall. Number 1, it was called ambition. Sema ambition. Ambition was that iyo tamaa ya kuwasend. And I want to tell you this morning, kuna ambition ni mzuri. Huh? Ambition ni kile mzukumo, mama melina mbao na kusukuma kutena jambu frani. Unasikia, I need to do a business. Kuna, kuna, kuna kile kitu ambacho kina kusukuma. Hata wakati unona mambo yende vizuri. Kuna iyo ambition ambayo na kuambia, you will make it. It is good. But ambition ambayo imekua zaidi ya kiasi, inakua dhambi. Hallelujah. Kuna watu ambayo wamekua as, a, 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 affected na ambition. Because they said, I will, I will have to get in that place. I don't care how I get it. Pengine unambu utapewa kazi malifrani. Lakini unasema, iyo position lazima ni chukue. Sitaki kujua kutakuwa na mnagali, but I have to take that position. There are so many young ladies ambao, they have sold their birthright. They have sold their own life to get to a certain position because they have an ambition. It is an ambition that has no self-control. Nile haina kuzuiliwa. And the man anasema, I will exalt myself.
Leo hii kuna wachungaji ambao wako na ambition ya kufanya ishara na miujiza. And because they want to come to ibada kama hii, akianza kuhubiri watu wanaanza kubiringika na sijui nani aliwaambia kubiringika ndio ku deliverance, sijui hiyo imeandikwa hapa katika Biblia. Wanaenda katika mahali fulani wanatafuta nguvu ambazo kiingia katika ibada zinanasa roho yako na mawazo yako. Unakuwa under the control of that man because of the ambition. Sema ambition. Na shetani anasema nitapaa au la send myself nitajinua zaidi ya Mungu nitaketi katika kiti ambacho Mungu ameketi maana ninatamani kupata utukufu and when the devil was doing that maandiko nasema he was able to convert one eighth one eighth of the angels wale walio binguni the demons ambazo zinatusumbua kila siku ni zile ambazo shetani toka nazo binguni for your information shetani ako katika miteka the devil is under arrest sema under arrest zile vitu zinawasumbua their agent demons wakati Yesu aliposhinda yote maandiko nasema ali, alienda akamfungia shetani na akachukua funguo akaletea pita akasema nimefunga binguna duniani na chochote mtakacho kifunga hapa duniani na binguni kime kimefungwa na kile mtakacho fungua kimefunguliwa so shetani ako under the captivity na shetani ataachiliwa baada ya miaka mitatu ya tribulation siku kutakuwa na seven years of tribulation three and a half years ambazo mambo itakuwa mzuri sana kila kitu kikuwe kizuri economy ya dunia ikuwe nzuri uh, uh, serikali ikuwe nzuri watu wanze kuwa na, na pesa zina flow vizuri baada ya miaka mitatu kutakuwa na miaka mingine mitatu ya tribulation ambapo yeye aliyewekwa korokoroni ambaye ni rusifa ataachiliwa and he will come na hapo ndipo nasikia watu watanunua maisha yao kwa damu yao nakuja unaulizwa wewe unapenda Mungu? Eh napenda Mungu. Unakatwa masikio moja. Unaulizwa tena, wewe utazidi kupata Mungu na eh unakatwa kidole moja. Unaulizwa utazidi kupata Mungu? Eh unakatwa mkono huo mwingine. Na maandiko nasema mama Faith, kifo kitakuwa mbali. Mtu atakuwa kipanda juu ya building, unaruka chini, ukishifika chini building na kuambia mimi sina nguvu ya kuua. I can't kill you. Nguvu za kifo zimeondolewa katika mikono yangu. Unakimbia dhika road, unajiekea hivi kwa gari kugonge gari inapiga break nakwambia mimi siwezi kukua because the power of death has been taken away from me na hapo ndipo maandiko yanasema ututanunua uzima wa milele kwa damu yetu and i'm grateful to god because tunaishi katika siku za neema we can still access tunaweza access mungu tunaweza enda mbele za mungu pasipo kusurutishwa tunaweza tukajipeana mbele za mungu tunaweza omba mungu tunaweza tukatubu dhambi zetu pasipo kusurutishwa Jambo la pili ambalo shetani alifanya alisema I will exalt myself. Ku exalt myself alikuwa na ilikuwa ni competition, ni roho ya mashindano. And that is the spirit that the devil is putting in the church. You want to be like other person. You want to be like other that other person. Let me tell you, dunia hii hakuna mtu ambaye is not great. Peter wewe ni great. Wewe ni mwimbaji mkubwa sana. Wewe ni mwimbaji mkubwa sana at your capacity. Mimi ni mhubiri mkubwa sana katika raini ambayo Mungu amenita. So siwezi nikajilinganisha na ule mwingine kwa maana huyo mwingine ni mkubwa katika nafasi ambayo Mungu amempa. So all of us we are great. So the devil wanted to be to exalt himself. He wanted to have the competition na Mungu. Ndio maana unaona shetani ana attack the prison worshiper. Ukimba leo vizuri. Watu wainue mikono. Unapata mwingine mwenye alikuwa hapo ni mwimbaji sana ana hazima microphone mimi nilikuwa siku moja ninaimba kanisa moja ikifika ni wakati wangu wa kuimba hakuna backup hawaimbi na hao akimba na back kwa sababu kuna kitu ambacho mtu anasikia i need that competition kwa maana sio kitu kimeanza leo shetani alianza kule binguni na competition yamaanisha you want to beat every other person unataka kuwa pale mbele lakini unasahau kila mtu ako mbele katika raini yake Nakumbuka siku moja nikiwa class 7 tulikuwa tunafutumefanya mtihani ya mock ambaye ilikuwa na determine kama mtu ataenda class 8 na kulikuwa na catline catline ile inakatwa inaambiwa kuanzia number 1 mpaka number 20 hao ndio wataenda lakini hawa wako chini wanarudia zamani ilikuwa kurudia siku hizi wale wako hii uh, hii 844 ya mwisho sio CBC 844 hakuna kurudia saa hizi wanasukumwa hiyo generation 844 yote iende ndio hawa wengine wakuje wa wakijoin so mimi nika hapa nilikuwa ndio niko pale 
the last person or the first person from the last nikaponea tu kidogo kurudia nisiende class 8 na hiyo haikunizuiria pita kufika mahali nimefika leo kwa sababu kuwa na number 19 sikio pengine nilikuwa mgonjwa pengine kuna jambo ambalo nilikuwa kwa mazo yangu pengine nilikuwa na stress haimaanishi mimi ni mjinga kwa sababu nilikuwa pale wale watu wako successful in life today sio wale watu walisoma sana bill gates ambaye ni founder wa microsoft word he's not a graduate ni kweli oscar he's not a graduate bill gates mwenye anafanya tutumie hii computer kufanya live stream sio graduate lakini ni kwa sababu ya kujua siwezi nika succeed in life kwa sababu mimi ni mwerefu pita mwana tumia na watu wengi katika bibruninga mama fei wametengeneza ndege hata mwingine alikuwa na ndaro ametengeneza ndege imepaa lakini lipo anguka ile anguka kama mbao leo hii yako wapi kuna kijana ile enzi zetu alikuwa alikuwa na miaka kumi na miwili alikuwa anaenda university Oscar unamjua alikuwa anaenda university 12 years old boy kufundisha marekcha university kijana wa miaka kumi na mbili na hajaenda huko mama Grace lakini leo hii yuko kwa sababu haimaanishi kwa sababu uko mbele waweza kuwa mbele hapana na imaanishi kwa sababu uko nyuma wewe uko permanent nyuma kwa sababu mahali ambapo Mungu amekuweka you are best in that area katika biashara yako unaofanya hata kama unauza shilingi hamsini leo na mwingine anauza shilingi tano wewe uko best at the capacity that God has put you in that place na uweze ukajilinganisha na huyo mwingine because the, the thing that the devil is using ni ile hali ya competition i will exalt myself unapata girlfriend una fake maisha ah na wasi ana mjitunge sana ama rafiki wa facebook una danganya na mtu facebook una muona amepigwa nyuma amekelea nini kwa prado hapa na wale wasichana wengine wapiga selfie nyuma ya prado wenyewe na sio yake naona mtu unampenda anakuini maisha yako ili huyo mtu amaintain hiyo maisha ata fake hiyo maisha kila siku tabidi kesho unakomboa gari ndio uende umuone hmm? unakomboa nguo kumbuka zamani tulikuwa tunaomba nguo tukia kuona girlfriend zetu unaomba nguo ya mtu kuna mtu alitolewa nguo na mtu kwa crusade akiimba ameomba mtu shati akaenda kuongoza mkutano mwenye shati anamwambia pale chini eh hey, manzi wewe tulikuwa tumeelewana uretudishe shati saa nane. ninaenda kuna mahali ninaenda saa kumi bwana leta shati yangu na niko mkutano mbele ya watu be yourself mahali ambapo Mungu amekupa that is where God want you to be vile Mungu amenifanya nihubiri hivyo ndivyo nitakavyohubiri siwezi nikajilinganisha na huyo mtu mwingine because i am a great man in the capacity that God has planted me na nikijaribu kuwa kama huyo mtu mwingine nina fake because i'm not him ni vizuri kuimitate your father kwa maana maandiko nasema imitate christ imitate me as i imitate god lakini sio ku fake ku fake ni kule kulazimisha kufanya mambo kama mtu mwingine mtu akienda wewe wivu ya shilingi 5000 kwa sababu na wewe unataka kumbiti na wewe unahakikisha utachukua pesa kwa chamaa na wewe uende wewe wivu ya shilingi 5000 inakuja hapa inakusumbua kwa sababu kila wakati una, unaitishwa ndani na hauna Shetani akasema I will exalt myself I will compete with God na jambo la tatu ilikuwa ni con- convertiousness I will sit nitaketi katika kiti I will sit on that seat kwa sababu Mungu amekaa katika kile kiti na anatukuzwa hata mimi nitaketi katika kile kiti nipokee utukufu ambaye Mungu amenipa nipokee utukufu kama ule Mungu anaochukua anao nikafanya kama vile Mungu anavyofanya na maandiko yanasema alipo karia alipojinua katika kile kiti utukufu Mungu alipokuwa utukufu uliokuwa juu yake Mungu akauchukua and Lord God was able to destroy him number four, he imit- imit- imitation akasema i will be like be yourself sasawa these things i'm hoping you naambia ili ziwasaidie because you can live a very good life when you live ukiwa wewe mwenyewe be yourself be who you are me i don't fake life 
Ukikuja kwangu pata tunakaliaga mawe, eh kuja tukalie mawe. Hatuna shida. Mimi don't have a problem with that. That is my life, that is my house, that is me. Yeah? Kuja kwa kwa kuta change kitu. Nitaenda niombe kiti ya jirani nikuje nikalie ivunjike. Kesho ni shida tena hasara ya kwenda ku kulipia kiti ya wenyewe. Ni kwa sababu niliomba kiti ili wageni wakuje wakalie. Eh? Zamani tulikuwa tunaomba vitambaa tunatandika kiti vile vitambaa vya jirani. Bahati mbaya mtoto anajua juu kitamani cha wenyewe anararua. Ukirudi mwenyewe na kwambia nikwenda kila dira hapo ndege nikio dreda. Kama hukuweza kununua chako utaweza kulipa cha wenyewe. Imitation. And that is the thing that I want you to live with. Maana roho ya ya pride ambayo ili attacks shetani. It is the spirit that is moving all over the world. People want to imitate people. People want to live their or the other people's life. Huh? Baka unapata wewe ni mwimbaji vile unaona wengine wakimba pala kwa television ameshika microphone hivi. Na wewe unataka tu kushika microphone hivi na unaambia Oscar akupandishie kiki kidogo. Ndio utoe sauti kama una mtu mwingine. Be yourself. Because you cannot imitate another person. Hata ukihubiri kama mimi utahubiri ndio ni kweli. But whatever you are doing it is not you. You are faking. Hallelujah. That is a spiritual cancer. And any time the pride inakuguza, the pride ni ugonjwa ambao unakukuranga pole pole. Wale watu wa kwanza wanakuliango pole pole. Unaweza patana na mtu saa hizi ako sawa. After two weeks usikia ameenda Kenyatta. After the few days unasikia huyo mtu ameenda. Mmeona picha za hata watu wakubwa kubwa wa serikali wenye wameuawa na kanza. Unaona mtu akikufa alikuwa ameisha. Amekuwa sura mbaya maana kanza inakumaliza na inaharibu tukufu wa Mungu katika maisha yako. Na kwa sababu you still want to operate in that realm of pride, kile kitu ambacho unafanya unaishi kitu kinaitwa ikabod. You begin to fake the presence of God. Na, uki, na kama hutaweza kufake the presence of God, unaanza kuraumu watu wengine kuwa hawana utukufu wa Mungu because the presence of God has departed from you because you want you want to still live in that level na Mungu alipoona pride aliondoa utukufu. Ndio umeona shetani leo Mano tukufu liondolewa he still looking for people that can be like him. Si ndio? Hiyo ndio ile kazi shetani anafanya kila siku. Kazi yake ni kutafuta nini? Wafuasi. Wale watakuwa na kiburi kama yeye ndio asikue peke yake wapi? Kuzimu. The that person. Ndio tunaye tukaone president aki address dunia. Eh, nikisema hivyo naona mnanipiga smile. Alikuwa anaitwa Solomon. Sema Suleimani. Suleimani alikuwa anaaffectiwa na kitu kinaitwa the last of the the last of what? The last of the fresh. Na kuna vitu kadhaa ambavyo tunahitaji tujifunze na Suleimani. Uh, Suleimani alikuwa alipewa mamlaka na Mungu ya kujengea Mungu madhabahu maana baba yake Daudi hakujenga madhabahu kwa sababu ya vitu vitatu jambo la kwanza alikuwa na damu katika mikono yake because mo, that all the time ya Daudi alikuwa katika vita na maandiko nasema uh, alipo fall kwa alipoanguka katika ile jambo Uh, Mungu akamwambia aka akamwambia Daudi hautanijengea kanisa lakini kanisa litajengwa na one of the son in your descendant na Mungu akamuinua Mungu akamuinua Suleimani ambaye alimjengea Mungu madhabahu na kuna mambo kadhaa ambayo nataka tuangalie kuhusu Suleimani ambayo ilifanya Suleimani akaweze kufall Jambo la kwanza ilikuwa inaitwa the ungoverned fresh desire sema ungoverned fresh desire sema vizuri ungoverned fresh desire alikuwa na tamaa ama alikuwa anapenda wanawake na by the way najiulizanga iswari hata kabla tusome the bible verse how comes mtu anaoa bibi 1000 
Ikiwa kuna watu wanazumbuliwa na moja. Ikukudenja alikuwa na ngapi? Eh, akukudenja. 15. Na walikuwa wamemsumbua. Suleimani alikuwa maandiko yanasema alikuwa na wake alikuwa na wake elfu. Hebu fungua in the book of uh, first king chapter 11. Hiyo haikuwa kwa burating. Hebu anzia verse 1. Uh, but King Solomon loved many foreign wives mm-hmm. as well as the daughter of Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Women of the Moabites Mm-hmm. Ammonites, mm-hmm. Edomites, Sidonians and Hittites from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel you shall not intermarry with them nor they with you surely they will turn away your heart after their gods Solomon clung to this in love Hebu simamisha kwanza hapo Mungu amekataza Suleimani akamwambia Sina shida na uoe. Kumbuka Suleimani alikuwa ni mtu wa hekima. Unakumbuka wakati wale wa mama wawili walijifungua mtoto mmoja, mtoto akakufa, mwingine akakuja akasema mtoto ni wake na mtoto hakuwa ni wake. Akaletea Suleimani. Na Suleimani akachukua hekima. Akachukua yule mtoto na, na upanga maana mfalme alikuwa anatembea na upanga katika nguo. Na akaitisha yule mtoto akasema nitawaganishia kila mtu waende na kipande chake na mwingine kipande chake. Lakini ule mama mwenye alikuwa mtoto ni wake akasema hapana mpe wote si kuliko tumuue. Lakini ndio mwingine alikuwa anasema hapana akatanishwe. Suleimani akajua wewe mwenye unasema mtoto akatanishwe sio wako ni wa huyu mama ambaye ana huruma ya mtoto. Na tunaona kuwa mafunzo ya Suleimani ukirudi pale nyuma kidogo unaona kuwa Suleimani alikuwa na anahubiria watu anawaambia wawe they should be careful with women. Marrying many women. Lakini alifall on the same trap. Na Mungu akamwambia Suleimani utakapooa usioe wake ambaye wako nje nje ya familia ya Israeli. Na tutaona vile kulivyotendeka baada ya Suleimani kufanya vivile. So jambo la kwanza tunaona alikuwa na sumburu na kitu kinaitwa the rust of the flesh. So Suleimani alikuwa na vitu vidi ambavyo zilikuwa zinamsumbua sana. He was so romantic and poetic. Na kuna wanaume wanatawara na roho ya Suleimani. Ukimpea nafasi umusikize dakika moja. Dakika moja tu. Utajipata umeanguka katika mtego. Because they are so romantic and so poetic. Anakupea maneno unasikia. Unachora chini mpaka kidore kinatoka nini brista. Ni vile maneno inaingia katika moyo. Hivyo ndivyo Suleimani alivyokuwa. Kuna mama alikuwa anaitwa Queen Sheba. Vita unamjua? Ni ametoka ni mtupi alitoka hapa Ethiopia. Na akasikia historia ya Suleimani Oscar vile alivyokuwa mkali. Na akasema nitaenda katika ikuru na nikamchallenge Suleimani kwa sababu ya hekima ile alivyokuwa nasikia. Maana ilikuwa ni mambo inatajwa. Na akatoka 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 Ethiopia. Akaenda all the way Ethiopia iko pande huu. Na Israeli kwa wapi? Kwa juu. Akapanda akaenda Israeli. Alipofika Israeli akawa mbeba dhahabu na, na mali za kumshukuru, Aka, akafika katika nyumba ya, ya Suleimani, akaangalia vile meza imepangwa. Eh? Wale watu wanafanya uh, kama my brother siku hoteli unajua kwa boardroom vile vitambaa vinapangwa hivi, unaona grass ziko raini moja. Akaenda akaangalia vile maua imekatwa kwa compound vile wafanyikazi wakileta chakula wanalete wakuwa wamepanga raini na wanatembea kama polisi aste aste Akaangalia kitu cha kumcharenge Suleimani akakosa akajipeana kwa Suleimani like one of the wives Because he had nothing to challenge him He was romantic and poetic. Na katika maisha yake alikuwa anatawadiwa na the spirit of the flesh. Akiona anatamani. And remember that spirit was inherited from the father. Si father aliona mke wa Bethsheba akioga. Huh? Na akasema ah uh, Bethsheba ndio alikuwa anaoga. Si ndio si ndio alikuwa mke wa Uria alikuwa anaitwa Bethsheba. Akaangalia akaona akioga. Akatumana akasema Uria aende awekwe front line. Ah hiyo siku anaambia Yuria aende alale kwake. Sababu alijua tayari ametenda dhambi and he was worried anaweza kuwa ame conceive. 
akatuma Yuria akamwambia aende arare kwake na mke wake. Yuria akamwambia mimi siwezi enda kupata kuwa na pressure na mke wangu na majeshi wengine wanaouawa msuni. Maandiko nasema usiku huo Yuria alirara katika rango ra, 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 in the entrance of the king. Na king alipoamka asubuhi akaambiwa Yuria alirara pale kwa mrango wake. Akajua hesabu yake haijakuwa successful. Katumana Hai, Yuria akaletwa. Akamwambia Yuria sasa Ninataka nikupatie barua upelekee the, the commander in chief ambaye yako kule kwa wo na ikaandikwa na hiyo barua yuria ndio mwenye kupatiwa akaambua pelekee mfalme na hiyo barua imeandikwa at yuria akikuja muweke front line mahali vita ni kubwa sana ndio auawe so yuria anapeleka tu barua tu kwa mfalme na ajui ni barua kumshika na alipofika pale akauawa na hiyo roho it was not conquered ikaanza kufuata the lineage of solomon na Solomon akawa and the last of the fresh. Japo la pili ambalo lilikuwa linasumbua Suleimani, it was called the ungoverned fresh desire. He loved so many women. Hata ukisema urare kwa mke moja kila siku. Elfu moja utarara kifika kwa mke wa elfu moja ni miaka mitatu. Hey, that man was very strong. Hey. Naombea Bwana awasaidie roho ya Suleimani siwapate. May you receive the wisdom but don't receive the other part of Suleiman. It was bad. Na alikuwa na kitu kinaitwa ungoverned fresh desire which which he was he was a slave to pressure. Suleimani alikuwa anamuona mwanamke hivi akimuona ile roho inaamka and anatumana aletwe na kukawa na shida sana in the in Israel maana he married the women from all the clans Unajua kwa nini utawara wa Suleimani hakukuwa na vita Utawara wa Daudi kumekuwa na vita na Mungu amemwambia Daudi hautanijengea madhabahu kwa sababu mikono yako ina damu So Suleimani alikuwa anafanya hivi akijua wako na shida na Uganda anaoa Uganda Wanatengeneza coalition na hiyo serikali So hiyo kingdom it attack Israel because waki attack the kingdom of Israel ni kama wana attack their in-laws kwa maana walikuwa wameoana na maandiko nasema akalete wake kutoka mataifa tofauti na kwa sababu Israeli ilikuwa ni nchi takatifu it was a holy nation na Mungu alikuwa amemwambia kuabudu miungu za kigeni it was abomination to God na alipotengeneza madhabahu ya Mungu maandiko nasema wale wake wakaingia na wakaanza kuweka miungu zao katika madhabahu ambayo yalikuwa matakatifu. Unapata huyu ameweka kamnyungu ka kake kala, mwingine ameweka kamnyungu ka kake ka budhis, mwingine ameweka kamnyungu ka kake ka ngombe, mwingine ameweka kamnyungu ka kake pale na madhabahu ya Mungu yakatiwa na jizi kwa maana wa, wale wake walikuwa nakuja katika ile inchi na miungu zao. Because he was ungoverned with a fresh desire na jambo la tatu kuhusu sulemani he built emotional friction emotional friction inaitwa soul tie sema soul tie na soul tie ni yale vitu ambavyo nawaambia if you have ever have a boyfriend sema hallelujah na mkaachana na kuna maneno muliambiana na hiyo maneno haijafunjwa. Hiyo maneno ni sultai. Sema sultai. Inafunga moyo wako. Na ndio maana unaona Suleimani ameoa wako wengi, alifika mahali ambapo hata akiona wakiweka miungu za kigeni, he had no option in the tabernacle because wameshikanishwa katika mioyo yao. Hata akiulizwa sasa Suleimani wewe hauoni kuoa katika inchi hii ni makosa sasa uniza sasa nitafanya nini Umai kwa mtu ako kwa toxic relationship unamwambia hii hii relationship itakufa kwa hii relationship anguliza sasa sasa nitafanya aje nitadua aje ninajaribu kutoka inashindikana So tiny kitu kitu kile ambacho kinakufunga you are in something you are trying to come out of that something lakini wewe moyo wako unataka kutoka lakini hauwezi ukatoka maana kuna kitu kimekushika pale it is called soul tie na Suleimani wakati mwingi alipokuwa in the kingdom 
Even when all these things are happening, he was pressure. He was a slave to pressure. Na kuna kitu angeweza kufanya. Hakuna vile angeweza kuchange because moyo wake ulikuwa umefungwa. Na sota hivi ndivyo inavyofanya kazi. Unapopatana na mtu ama mchumba unamwambia nakupenda na yeye anakuambia anampenda, unamkatiaka kapisi ka moyo wako. Mwingine anakuja, unamwambia the same, kapisi ka moyo wako. So by the end of the day, unapata moyo wako umekatakatwa to peace. Hauna authority over your own heart. Hauna mamlaka juu ya moyo wako. Maana vipande vikubwa vya moyo wako vimegabagawa kule nje. Na hivyo ndivyo Suleimani alivyokuwa. Jambo la ile. He declined over a prophecy. Yeye yamanisha he turned his heart to other god. Aligeuza moyo wake na kuabudu miungu mingine. Na mambo yale yalikuwa naongoza ikaanza kwenda wrong. Ufalme wake ukaanza kwenda wrong, economy ya Israeli ikaenda wrong, na chochote kile ambacho kilikuwa kule Israeli it begin to go wrong because his heart was turned to other gods. Na ndio nataka kuambia asubuhi ya leo. Usiwahi kubari kitu ambacho kitaingia katika moyo wako kichukue nafasi ile Mungu amekalia. Either ni biashara, either ni kazi, either ni ni kile kitu ambacho unapenda kisichukue moyo wako because anything that takes your heart it becomes a small god in your life. Na Suleimani akawa na miungu mingine, akawa katika Hekaru ambaro alijengea Mungu nafasi kubwa ikawa imechukuliwa na miungu mingine because the thousand wife every wife alikuwa anakuja na kamungu kake na ile madhabahu ya Mungu ikawa imetiwa na jizi na Mungu alio wa kweli akaondoka na kukawa hakuna mamlaka katika madhabahu ya Mungu maana nafasi ya Mungu ilikuwa imechukuliwa na miungu mingine na jambo la mwisho ambalo lilifanya huyu mtu akawa affected with the spiritual cancer it was called the corruption and abomination He built temple for these gods. The madhabahu ambayo ilikuwa yamenuliwa ya Mungu ikafanyika madhabahu ya Mungu mingine. Ukumbuka hawa ukisoma Biblia vizuri in the book of First King unaona and the book of uh, um, First King and the, the the second Samuel unaona kuwa walichinjia hao hao mama walianza kuchinja watoto katika madhabahu ya Mungu. Imagine wakitoa kafara ya watoto katika the temple that was made of God. Na ukirudi nyuma kidogo utaona hiyo temple ilikuwa ni tempo ambayo ilikuwa imetengenezwa kwa dhahabu, shama na ilikuwa imetengenezwa with the hardwood. Na ni mahali ni tempo ambayo Mungu aliweka na dhidi akamwambia Mungu, akamwambia Daudi hautatengeneza madhabahu lakini one of your son ambaye atakuwa ni your successor, he will raise a temple for me. Na kutakuwa ni mahali pa kuabudu Mungu. Na sanduku la agano likawekwa pale. Lakini miungu mingine ilipoletwa, maandiko nasema sanduku la agano likaondoka, maana lilikuwa lina present the presence of God na Mungu angeweza kuishi katika ile Mungu. Maana hapa ndipo sanduku la agano limewekwa, lakini pale kuna mama anatolea kafara, anachinja mtoto, anajikatakata, anamwaga damu, anachinja wanyama ili atolee miungu yao kafara. Na Mungu akiwa pale akaondokea. Na kaapa katika moyo wake, akasema from now the kingdom of Israel will be splitted. Ufalme ambao ulikuwa kitu kimoja ukagawanyika ukawa vipande. Na kwa miaka mingi Israeli kawa Israel was not a nation. Kwa nyinyi ni wasomo wa historia. It was not a nation until 1948. Hapo ndipo walipata utawara, ndipo walipata the independent na Israeli ikafanyika a nation for the second time. Kuanzia ile makosa ambayo ilifanywa na Suleiman. So there are some mistakes that we can do in life. The desire of the flesh it's something that can take the glory of God in our life. And I always say ukisikiza zile mafunzo ninafunza kwa radio every Friday saa saba mpaka saa nane. Nimekuwa nikifunza for the whole of this year about the present worship. Nikasema present worship can attract the presence of God and the present worship can kick away the presence of God. Because ikiwa katika moyo wako ume umejawa na the, the last of the flesh You cannot be a carrier of the presence of God. You cannot be a carrier of the Holy Spirit of God. You cannot be a carrier of the power of God. Maana Paulo alisema wale wanaopenda wanaofanya mambo ya mwili ni wa dunia hii. And the last of the flesh is of 
of this world. Sawa sawa. Na ufalme wa Israeli ukawa umekuwa divided until 1948 ndipo ule utawala ukafanyika nation again for the second time. So the spiritual cancer we have seen great men in the Bible. Tumeona Solomon, tumeona Lucifer, tumeona Achan. Wale, wale watu walikuwa na usemi mkubwa sana. Lakini maisha yao because of the affection of the spiritual cancer. Maisha yao yakawa yameisha tu. Maisha yao yakawa hayajamaliza vizuri. Wakawa wameanza na, na roho lakini wamemalizia na mwili. And it is my prayer for you that in the year 2021 hautamaliza kwa mwili. You will not finish in the flesh but you shall finish strong in the spirit of God. Simama tu kwa mbingu yako. Just stand up on your feet tunapomalizia in Jesus mighty name. It is my prayer. It is my desire. It is my wish ya kuwa tukabeze kusimama, tukabeze kumaliza strong the year 2021. Inua tu mikono yako mwambie tu bwana nisaidie. Help me Lord that I may not be affected with the spiritual cancer. Inua tu mikono mwambie bwana nisaidie bwana. Help me Lord. Help me Lord. Help me Lord. Help me Lord. Nisimalize kama Suleimani. Alimaliza nguvu. Alimaliza kwa heka. Alimaliza na uwezo mkubwa sana but the end of Suleiman ilikuwa ni kufanya inchi ya, ya Israeli kawe split. Tunaona mwingine anaitwa Lucifer. He was a great worshiper in the kingdom of God. Lakini alimalizia na kuzimu. Tunaona Akan ambaye alikuwa ni amnijeshi mkubwa. Lakini kwa sababu ya kuwa affected by the spiritual cancer, affected by the greed, maisha yake akamalizia akiwa mtu wa kawaida. Mwambie tu Bwana nisaidie. Help me oh God that I may be able to finish strong that I may be able to stand strong nisimalize kama watu wa dunia i want to i want to finish my battle strong i want to finish the year 2021 strong i want to conquer every battle strong sitaki kuwa affected by the spiritual cancer because the spiritual cancer hauwezi kujua inapokushika lakini utaanza kuona vile maisha yako ya kiroho inapoanza unaanza kupungua unaanza kupungua unaanza kupungua na dakika ya mwisho unajipata You are no longer walking with God. Because one of the weapon ambao shetani anatumia in the spiritual cancer ni kutaka kukuonyesha wewe you are so holy kuliko watu wengine. Wewe unajua Mungu sana kuliko watu wengine. Wengine ni wenye dhambi. But the healthy the spiritual healthy ni ile inakusaidia kuona wale watu wengine ni, hata kama ni wenye dhambi una mas- wa Kristo unawasaidia kwa kubadilika lakini hawasukumi kando na kuwafanya hao kana kwamba ni wenye dhambi hawastahili because if Jesus alikaria katika hiyo macho we could not be able to enter the kingdom of God Jesus chose the poor he chose the weak alichagua wale ambao hawakuwa na uwezo alichagua wale ambao walikuwa madharauliwa alichagua wale walikaa kana kwamba hawana maana they were fishermen they were just ordinary people akawata kuchukua the pharisees ambao walikuwa na uwezo ambao walikuwa na masomo ambao walikuwa wanajua sheria but he chose those ambao walikuwa madharauliwa wananuka wachafu wanakaa samaki but he used those na ndio maana maandiko nasema he will use the strong or the weak of this ili kuaibisha the weak vessel when the spiritual cancer affect your life you begin to see yourself so holy you begin to ascend and sit you begin to exalt yourself you begin to kudharao wengine na kuona hakuna kitu kizuri chaweza kupatikana kwao but when you live a healthy life it is when you will help other people to change and to become better person because that is the call that God has called us and that's why you see the church is not on again the church is not for the believer but the church is for unbeliever they come to the church not knowing god but when they are in the church the power of god changes them and they become a believer mambo ya tobwa saidie help me lord to finish strong so that i may not be affected by the spiritual cancer maybe you are here this morning to kwa tumeinamisha vichwa vyetu inamisha tu kichwa chako na umefunga macho yako asubuhi ya leo uko hapa asubuhi ya leo na hujiokoka and you want to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior the first the first the first dose ambao unaweza kuchukua ya kukusaidia kukoka this it is when you have Jesus in your life because maniko nasema what can it benefit a man if you own the whole world and you loses your own soul 